What if I told you the best reality show on TV isn't on TV? It's a show called Jet Lag the Game, and it has blown my mind. Uh, basically, it's the amazing race, but on steroids. It takes basically the idea of traveling with a team of two and decides to do a different game each season. And if you're watching this, you're probably already fairly familiar with the content or you're my dad. So let's just go into this. I don't want to do too much background because I feel like, again, you probably know what Jet Lag the Game is, but uh, let's do counter, minute, go. So Jet Lag the Game was created by Sam Wendover Denby. It originally was conceived as America the Game where they'd play various different travel games across the country, but it has later shaped into Jet Lag the Game which is the show that we know now. It actually started as a game called Crime Spree, uh, which was exclusive to the streaming service Nebula, which is a creator-owned streaming service, semi-educational. That eventually formed into Jet Like the Game. Basically, you kind of already know what this game is. I'm gonna assume what it is. It's a travel show. Here's some footage. I'm gonna let Sam explain it. We're playing Connect Four, but instead of connecting tiles, we're connecting actual American states. The ones that forgot are the 22 west of the Mississippi, not Alaska and Hawaii because they're too far, and not the east coast ones because they're too janky and small and weird. How we claim the state is we go to the actual state capital building and randomly draw a card from this deck. On each card is a challenge. We complete that challenge. We claim the state. Once we have four states that can be connected either perfectly vertically or perfectly horizontally, we win. The teams are myself and Brian from Engineering and Ben and Adam, who are not famous, so they don't get to talk. That's the rules to only one of the games. That is the rule to Connect Four across America, in which they play a giant game of Connect Four across the United States, yada, yada, yada. Every single game is something like that. So whether it be Connect Four or they're playing tag, capture the flag, whatever, sometimes they'll make their own little game. They'll just do a big race around some place. Really changes and varies depending on the season. Other than that, I have to say, I've fallen in love with this show almost. I mean, in my last video, the one with the Family Guy thumbnail, the Google Maps one, I'd say like I got like three or four comments saying, hey, I love the jet lag stickers. And so I was like, I might as well make a video about it now. Come to think of it, I've been watching Wendover Productions in general since about the fifth grade. Uh, I remember in my class, we had to do a project about anything. We had to do a research project. That was the thing. And most people, went with a project about like Legos or their favorite sports teams or, or like, like uh, Barbie dolls or whatever. Uh, I went on a research project about Keogvik, Alaska, which is the northernmost city in the United States because I saw a Wendover Productions video about that city. I discovered the show a couple years ago. I discovered the show on its first season, actually. I remember finding it and not really knowing what the deal was. I could recognize Sam's voice, but I didn't exactly know where he was from. And then it took me a second, but I realized he's from Wendover Productions, which is the channel that made that Ikiaga video. And after watching a few seasons, I, I started to get really invested. So I shared it with my, with my family. I showed it to my mom, who absolutely loves The Amazing Race, like I do. And now we watch every season together. There's a, I have a lot to say about this game. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rank every season. I'm gonna do an analysis as to what I think makes each season great or not so great. So I'm just gonna quickly explain something. You might be watching this video and expect there to be like like a punchline or like a joke there isn't gonna be. I, I'm experimenting doing a different thing on my channel each month. So I'm trying like a longer form, more review style video. Last month or whatever, I did like a, like a Brian David Gilbert, like that was the Risk of Rain one. And then the Google Maps one was just, I needed to make a video that month. If you like Jet Like the Game, uh, don't subscribe. I think my goal for this video is to never talk about this show ever again. If you want more Jet Like content, there's plenty of other channels out there. Uh, I'd recommend Miles in Transit. He creates his own sort of Jet Like the Games. I'd recommend Wendover Productions if you really like Sam, Ben, and Adam and their style of humor. I'd recommend Cloda if you want more content on Jet Like the Game specifically. Hi, Cloda. I didn't really talk about spoilers, but I don't think I'm gonna spoil anything specific. If I'm gonna spoil anything big, you're probably not gonna remember it if you haven't seen the show anyways. And if you do plan on watching the show, I guess just skip the seasons you plan on watching. All of these games are very intricately designed. They usually take a few months to design the game, play test it. Eventually they'll come out with a game that takes place over the course of a few days, which will be presented in multiple episodes releasing every week, one week early on Nebula. In fact, I bought a Nebula subscription after watching, I think it was the fifth season. I wanted to see one of the episodes early, which is a benefit I get from Nebula, plus the Nebula exclusive season that I mentioned earlier, Crime Spring. Yeah, I might as well get into it. Here's my definitive season ranking of every season of Jet Lag the Game. Coming in at number 10 isn't even technically a season of Jet Lag the Game, it's Crime Spree, which again, I've mentioned earlier, but 
it definitely falters compared to some of the other seasons because it isn't a Jet Lag the Game season. You're not watching Jet Lag the Game, you're watching almost a prototype. I mean, this season was more so about the crimes than the travel. Basically, the format for this season was Sam and his partner, Doug Walker from Channel Awesome, would have to travel across the United States and try to break as many weird and obscure crimes as possible. While their writers from Half is Interesting, Adam and Ben would try to chase them. A lot of this season definitely goes into the crimes, but I don't think that's necessarily why you want to watch it. You watch it for the travel. You watch it to see how can Sam get to the one place from the other and how can he achieve getting the most crimes possible. I don't think this is necessarily a downfall for Crime Spree. Actually, I think it elevates it a lot because it definitely has a theme. Compared to any other season of Jet Like the Game, the challenges are all themed. They're all different various crimes, and I think that actually keeps the show relatively fresh compared to the other seasons, but also it's a little lackluster. You can kind of tell Sam's a little camera shy, and Adam and Ben haven't really broken into their personalities that Jet Like the Game would be known for. It kind of comes as a hindrance to the season because you don't really have a chance to see Adam and Ben flourish. And Sam, again, is a little camera shy. Most of the times he's on camera, it feels pretty awkward. I think a good example of this is the very start of the season. It just takes place in a hotel room, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I kind of like the big bombastic starts that the later seasons would have. That being said, eventually it does become a pretty watchable season. I'd like to talk about it more, but I don't know how much I can really give away. So there's kind of an unspoken rule that if anything's Nebula exclusive, like the next episode of Jet Like the Game comes out a week early, people will hush-hush about it. So I don't know if I can go into specifics here. Again, it feels so awkward. It feels like something's missing from the game, and I think that missing element is Jet Like the Game. It doesn't have that identity to it. It feels more like Crime Spree. The crimes are fun. I think that's definitely the most fun I have in the show. Learning about all the different obscure crimes is interesting at least and I don't know they go to Boston so that's a plus. A little problem with the show is they nearly die. Like all the people playing nearly die. Sam is probably the only one who comes out of here not dying but even then he's got to break a bunch of weird crimes that involve him like running next to cars. Adam and Ben get basically zero sleep and they have to drive throughout the entire northeast. In fact they fly from the east coast to the west coast back to the east coast and then drive up throughout the entire Northeast all in one day, which is just insane. Um, this is the only season that doesn't have any rest period or time where, you know, they can sleep. I mean, here's the thing. I like Sam, Adam, and Ben and Doug Walker. I don't want to see them nearly die. I do have to say, though, really funny ending to the series. If you've seen Crime Spree, I think you'd understand why. I think it has a very solid and funny ending, but I don't know. I think that's probably the biggest saving grace. Again, it's a bit hard to exact why I don't really like it, but this is the only season that has like musical numbers, which is a little odd. It's a reality show. I don't know why they do that. I mean, they're funny though. I kind of, I like them. I'd say it definitely holds on its own, but overall it's not the strongest contender. Number nine. I know Sam, Ben, and Adam really, really, really like Japan, but it's probably my least favorite season. I know it's a little harsh to say that oh, this is my least favorite season, don't take that in a bad way. I think every single season of the show does have entertainment value. I think this one's just the least good, if that makes sense. So let's start with the positives, what makes Jet Lag Japan great and what makes every season great in general. The theming's on point. Everything is Japan themed. Every single challenge card definitely feels Japan and it definitely feels like a great place to do a game. There are a lot of funny moments, I guess. Uh, I like the bit in the castle, the samurai castle, that was probably one of the best moments in the entire show. It kind of makes me wish they had more moments like this because Jet Lag Japan feels like it never leaves the train station. That's my main problem with this season. I think the game itself really doesn't lend itself well to actually seeing Japan. They say like they're, they're gonna play it across the entire country and they really do. They really do go to the far north and the far south of the country, but it never really feels like they leave a train station because almost every challenge is go eat an egg, which is not particularly compelling. I mean, again, I think a lot of the challenges are well themed. It's just, I don't think they're interesting. A lot of them just involve going to the store, which I think definitely lets down Japan as a whole because I think this could have had some great potential. Again, the castle challenge actually forced them to leave the train station, which is what I thought made it a really interesting scene. 
So the game itself is capture the flag. Each team has two flags that they need to capture. Each day the game grows bigger and each time they capture the flag, they get more distance points or whatever. They need to do challenges to earn coins. They need to, there's so much in this game. There's so much, there's too much going on. It's just difficult to keep up. I think with the game design of Jetlag the game, with all the play testing, I think so much goes into the balancing that they can kind of forget the big picture and that sometimes the best way to balance a game isn't to add more so you can balance it, it's just to simplify it. I mean, they added towers and all these different power-ups and it's so bizarre. Uh, I do have to say, plenty of these mechanics I think are great and I think they work well in the show. I think the towers are a wonderful idea and it makes for a few really cool gameplay moments. I think if you really like gameplay, this is the best season. If you don't care about the travel and you're not particularly compelled by the challenges and you're all, let's see which trains they take, let's see whatever, it's, I guess it's the best. From Sam, Adam, and Ben's perspective, I can totally understand why they believe this is their best season. But for me, personally, as a viewer, this wasn't one I found particularly compelling. If I stumbled across this show during this season, I'd probably still enjoy it, but I'd probably change to a different season before I got invested in this one. The guest this time is Scotty from Strange Parts, and um, I like him. I definitely do. Uh, I don't think I dislike any of the guests. I mean, I don't really want to rank people. I think that's a terrible thing to do. Me personally, I like the guests that differ from Sam a lot, not necessarily the ones that feel very similar to him, because I like Sam having an interesting dynamic with someone. I like seeing people who have new and different ideas from him. And no offense to Scotty, but he is another nerdy white boy. Anyways, I mean, I'm narking on the game, but I couldn't design a game like that. Number eight. At number eight, we have Circumnavigation, the second season, which for the longest time was actually my favorite season. This one really is all the traveling. If you really don't care about gameplay, and I guess if you like challenges, then this one really is for you. In this season, they must circumnavigate the globe by taking commercial flights. They have, what, 100 hours to do it? It's not a game. It's probably the least gamey season out of any of them. They're literally just taking flights to go from left to right until eventually they go back to Denver. It definitely feels like there could have been something more and it's definitely made up for later in other seasons. I think season eight is a great example of sort of redoing a game but doing it better this time. So circumnavigation, they start out in Denver. Uh, the guest this time is Joseph from Real Life Lore. They have to circumnavigate the globe. That's really awesome. So why was this my favorite season? I think this was my favorite season because it was the biggest game. I mean, they circumnavigate the globe, that's awesome. And I think that's awesome, but there's so little actual gameplay. And what I think this season really lacks is team interaction. Very rarely is there a moment where one team's doing affects the other. It's only by complete accident, nothing intended by game design when one team's gameplay actually does affect the other when they're both in Singapore. I think Ben and Adam stealing the Sky Park Sentosa challenge. That is probably the best moment in the season. And again, one of those moments that really made me fall in love with the show. But another big downfall of this one is uh, after a certain point, you know who's gonna win. I think once Ben and Adam are in Singapore and uh, Sam and Joseph are still in Amsterdam, it kind of makes it obvious, but once Sam and Joseph literally can't complete a single challenge in Singapore. It gets sad, and you're just watching Ben and Adam win for the next two episodes, which is great. I like Ben and Adam, and honestly, this is the season in which they come into their own. Again, it's not really a game. You're not really watching the race anymore. It's just seeing if you can circumnavigate the globe on a budget, which you can, and it's awesome. The challenges this season are, they're actually quite good. I like the bungee jumping challenge. I like the go-kart challenge. I definitely like when they run the uh, the donut mile. What was it? Pastry mile. Also, this is one of the only seasons that's actually gotten me to go to a place from the show. At some point, Sam and Joseph go to Amsterdam and they go to Vondel Park, which is like a park in Amsterdam. And last summer, I happened to be in Amsterdam. So of course I had to go take a photo near all the places that they went to. When I first showed my mom and my brother uh, Jet Like The Game, this was the season that I picked out. Do I think that was a mistake? Absolutely not. They fell in love with the show too. But honestly, I think pretty much any other season out at the time, one, two, three, or four, could have been a better pick. It's not like it isn't compelling, I think, if you really do want to see people circumnavigate the globe. If this is the season you wanted to start out with, go ahead. Number seven. I just want to clarify, there's like a big jump between circumnavigation and this season which is the first season 
Connect Four across America. This season was the first season I saw, and one moment in this season made me fall in love with the show. So starting out, we have Brian from Real Engineering pairing up with Sam, and Ben and Adam are all in Chicago O'Hare Airport, and they need to connect four across America by visiting the actual U.S. state capitals. Starting off, it's already interesting to see that they need to go to the state capitals. It's not just going to the state. I think already that makes it interesting because how many people would consider going to Carson City, Nevada? Obviously, they could have gone to Vegas or whatever, but no, they went to Carson City. The gameplay here is quite simple. It really is just, it's not necessarily a collectathon because they have to think about the state's shapes, which already scratches the itch in my geography brain. The challenges this season aren't necessarily the most compelling bit about it. They really just go to the capital and then have to do a small challenge, like eat a dessert. It's not the most interesting challenge season, but that's why the travel becomes so compelling. I'm definitely someone who really likes the travel in this show, hence why I wasn't particularly compelled by Jet Lag Japan. So I'm definitely someone who wants to see all these weird and sort of interesting places. And I think this season definitely caters to me in that way. Just like I said with Crime Spree, it lacks a certain energy. I think everyone's a little camera shy. Brian from Real Engineering is basically dead this season. If you don't know, when he came on to do the season, he didn't even know like what he was doing until he basically got there. Sam was just like, hey, we're doing Connect Four across America. And Brian just said, okay. And he was basically surviving on like two hours of sleep the whole time. So where does this game falter? Uh, it's the beginning, it's definitely the beginning. So for having a great end and hell, even a pretty compelling middle, the first episode to this season is probably the weakest in the entire series. It really just does take place in that hotel and then they just kind of go to like one state each. It's cold, it's wintry, it doesn't look that great on camera. I can't really say it got many people hooked if I showed them this episode. But there is one moment in this season which I think instantly will hook someone onto the show. Uh, at a certain point, Ben and Adam decide that they need to claim Montana in order to prevent Sam and Brian from winning. They decide to go on a flight from Salt Lake City to Montana in order to accomplish this. Sam and Brian are on the exact same flight from Salt Lake City to Montana. The look on Adam's face single-handedly got me addicted to this show. The thing is though, once they arrive in Montana, they, they don't even arrive in Montana because the flight gets redirected at the last minute. So they have to go back to Salt Lake City in which Ben and Adam claim Utah, meaning there is a race to Montana. Whoever claims Montana first will win the entire game. That is awesome. It's those weird like little run-in moments like those, which I think really do make the best game. Again, it's why circumnavigation felt like a little weak. Yeah, Connect Four is actually a really strong season. It was probably the most difficult process picking between these more middling seasons, but don't get offended if any of them end up a little lower than you thought in the list. Speaking of which, number six. Okay, I'm gonna get crucified for this, but Tag Across Europe, season one. This is by far the most popular season of the show. Uh, not just in terms of view count, but I'd say online, I think, most people in the fandom really love this season, or they can all collectively agree on saying that this is one of the best. I'm definitely in there. I really like this season, but I also really like every other season. And where does this one go wrong? Okay, so this time there's no guest. Uh, it's just Sam, Ben, and Adam, and they're doing tag across Europe. That's great. There are three different end zones that they need to reach. Uh, they just need to go from one place to the other. If they get tagged, different runners subbed in and now they have to go. The problem is I think it definitely lacks that kind of moment, like I mentioned before, where it's a weird run in like, oh, they're on the same flight or whatever. The closest the season ever gets to that moment is around the end where Adam is stuck on the train when he becomes the runner again. That is a particularly compelling moment for me. Honestly, it's not enough to warrant me considering it one of my favorite seasons. It's a cool moment, it doesn't really last though. It only really hangs on until the end of the episode and that little cliffhanger, and then after that, it, it's kind of done. Okay, so in this season, they go to Calais. They go to Calais, France, which is on the English Channel, and it's only 20 or so miles away from England, so you could take a ferry from Kent to Calais. So I did. The thing is, when I took this ferry, it was maybe a week before they filmed the actual season. When I went there, 
my mom kept saying like, oh, we got to see the dragon. We never saw the dragon. We walked around for like maybe two hours because fairies take a very long time if you want to spend two hours in France that day. Two hours searching that damn dragon. We couldn't find it and Sam finds it an accident. This season feels very balanced in my mind. It feels like everyone got basically the same amount to be the runner. By the end, they actually end up basically where they started the game. I think a lot of the challenges are okay. Uh, I think, an again, another big moment in the season is Adam's disguise. So in this season, they actually stray away from the usual format of having two teams of two, and they instead do just three of them, which is a change up because we now get to see Sam paired off with Ben and Adam. But I think the most interesting pairing is Sam and Adam because they don't know what Occam's razor is because Ben will literally just take the best train out of any place and Sam and Adam will be like, no, he's, he's trying to outsmart us. He's trying to outthink us because both of them are very invested in the game and both very much so overthink. While each player is a runner, they all get to have time as individuals. And this is pretty cool. But Ben. At first, my mom didn't even like this. My mom thought, well, he's just trying to be silly. He's just trying to take the best train out of a place. He's not really thinking about the strategy. But that is the strategy. The strategy is just do the best thing. And it kind of works. To be fair, Adam ends up winning the season. Challenges this season aren't particularly memorable. Again, I don't think this one is really a challenge season. Trust me, there are some challenge seasons coming up. I guess I really like the challenges because I put all of them up higher, but I think this is a good game. Uh, again, it just lacks those like aha moments for me. I think the game itself is really well designed. Uh, I think having the train-based game definitely fits Jet Lag the game a lot more than constantly flying. For Tag, that's what really makes it work. But I think for me, I'm definitely someone who prefers the bigger investment moves. I prefer taking these flights because Every time they take a flight, that's what they're deciding to do. They can't hop on in between trains. It's, that's the move. And you can kind of narrow down like, oh, this is the biggest mistake that they made along the way. Number five, season four, Battle for Dream Island. This was at some point probably my favorite season. This season is probably the best if you like travel. They go to the most places. Like, like period, they just go to the most places. They visit at the end, I think it's 23 states in the period of 100 hours, all while doing challenges in them. Again, the guest this time is Brian from Real Engineering paired up with Sam and Ben and Adam win, like always. They never stop winning. I think the biggest folly with this season is definitely the fact that Ben and Adam are constantly winning. It's only until about when they're making that comeback, when they're in California and Nevada, Sam and Brian, that you start thinking, oh, they're coming back from this. They're actually gonna catch up. And then Sam buys that damn tracker. It could have been perfect. You could have had the perfect comeback story if Sam didn't buy that tracker. I'm not gonna sort out specifically what they could have done, but either way, it does frustrate me. At first, I really did root for Ben and Adam this season. I was like, oh, I, I really like this team. I want to see them win. Then after a certain point, they're already dead. Like, so in this game, they have to go to a state and again, complete a challenge. But the difference is they can go anywhere in the state. They have a bunch of different challenges that they can choose from in a deck of cards, which means they can plan out which challenges they're going to do when they arrive somewhere, which makes the perfect combination between big, difficult challenges that you can't necessarily do on a whim, like eating soup in a helicopter. I really thought the move where they eat soup in a helicopter in Nevada and then decide to visit the Grand Canyon as both being individual challenges, but being able to do them in one big move. That was brilliant. Moves like those, they're great. I really like that. That's, I'm a big fan. This is probably the best season for challenges out of any of them. There are so many great ones. I actually don't think there's a single really bad challenge, maybe like the claw machine one. But speaking of which, they go to Massachusetts in this season, big W. And then Ben talks about why he hates it, because he's drunk, and um, <clears throat> it's a big W anyways. So in this season, they go to the Pez Museum uh, in Connecticut, which is kind of weird because I thought I was the only one who's gone to the Pez Museum. My dad collects Pez dispensers. We have like a whole room full of them. You know, we live in New England, so we're like, let's do a weekend trip to the Pez Museum. 
and that's what we did. I've been to the Pez Museum two times. Ben and Adam have too, and I think that's awesome. I think this season has definitely made me recontextualize how I see the United States. Like, this is how to visit the most states in this amount of time. Like, oh, you can go from this place to this place really quickly, take me a cella. No season of any show should make me think, man, I really want to go on the Acela. But this one did because it's jet lagged the game. And of course it did. The leg where Ben and Adam are in the Midwest and Sam and Brian are in Tennessee is also quite brutal. I don't know how you watch that and still think, yeah, Sam and Brian are still in it to win it. Again, it really isn't until that comeback much later where things become a lot more balanced. Sam and Brian losing so hard in this season is painful to watch, almost. I mean, it's not necessarily even a fault of gameplay, it's literally just luck. I mean, like, I couldn't design a game like that, so I shouldn't really be judging them for not accounting for anything luck-related. Number four. So, Tag 2. What if we took Tag across Europe and decided to do it again? Like, literally, just do it again. And that's what they did. They did it twice. Literally nothing changes. Gameplay-wise, I think the only thing that changes is who runs first and maybe the direction in which they have to run. And that's about it. I mean, I don't really have anything else to say aside from how it turns out. I just think it turns out a little better. This is a Ben season, by the way. If you're a Ben fan, great news for you. There's a whole Ben season. Ben moving, like, between trains in Luxembourg. There's no way he should have been able to get away with that, but he did, and I think that's brilliant. I don't even have like a lot to say on this season. It's just better than the first season of Tag. It might be recency bias or something. I think I just really like Ben. The only other thing I have to say about the season is we get dangerously close to actually seeing one of the end zones in this season, which I really wish we actually got to see. It's not even Ben's end zone, it was Adam's. We also get to see a bunch of different countries this time. I think I forgot to mention this, but one of the big complaints I had about the first tag season is we only really saw France until like episode five, where we see like a bit of Germany. It's nice to see other countries. Like we actually see a lot of the Netherlands. We see Belgium, we see Luxembourg. I don't think we get to Switzerland and we definitely don't get to England, which would have been awesome. I think watching Ben's run as Sam and Adam slowly descend into madness is, that's the type of entertainment I want from this show. And I mean, am I gonna criticize them for doing the exact same game again? No, I mean, after all, I couldn't design a game like this. Number three. So I wasn't even planning on talking about this season, but Jet like the Game Switzerland, Hide plus Seek, that is an awesome season. Here's why. Okay, so it's not even like fully out yet. Uh, I watched the finale on Nebula, so I'm not gonna discuss anything that happens in the ending, even though I really want to because I really like the ending. At first I was a little skeptical because they were doing a season on a much smaller scale. Switzerland is not as big as the United States. So I was like, okay, how are they gonna do a whole season like this? And I realized you're not watching this season for the travel at all. There's basically no actual travel involved. It's about getting these clues and actually trying to decipher where the hider is. My God, this is probably the most frustrated I've seen any of these people. They spend like nine hours trying to find Ben and he is just hiding literally around the corner in the playground or whatever. It feels very down to earth. It feels very practical. They're hiding in playgrounds. They're not necessarily thinking about booking all these big flights. It's like if they tried to take tag and just inverted it where the hider can actually see where the chasers are. If you're into like challenges and stuff, this isn't a great season. I think they do like three challenges the entire season because they're curses, they're not actually challenges. And even then the curses don't even feel like they do too much. By the end, they're buying as many clues as possible because it definitely feels like they're learning along the way, but I kind of like that too. They're learning how to actually just hide from someone because that's something playtesting can't account for. I mean, after all, I couldn't design a game like this. I don't even like care about location variety in this season because it really is all about narrowing down these places, about finding out where these people are alongside the chasers. I don't know, it's kind of hard to say why I like this season the most. Uh, recency bias? Yeah, I'll just say recency bias. That's why it's my number three. Number two. So you know how I mentioned earlier that in fifth grade I did a research project on Utkiagvik, Alaska? Well, they go there this season. They go to the northernmost town in the United States and they have to race down to the southernmost town in the United States. They have to go from Utkiagvik, Alaska to Key West, Florida. That's sick. 
This is probably one of the most unique games that they design, simply due to the beginning of the game. They start on a half day, they don't have a full day. They have a half day to do a challenge to see who gets to leave and fly to Anchorage first. If they don't, you're stuck in Ikiagvik that night. Cool little strategy emerges in this season. It's called begging. At three different points, the strategy for either team is literally go to the counter and beg to get on a flight just because the rules say that they can't fly even like five minutes after the rest period starts. The challenges this season are great. Every single challenge is explicitly linked to a flight, which I'll get into a second. I'll get into what the flop even is. Every single challenge is linked to either a flight, a car, or a train, which they need to take. Making each challenge linked to a flight specifically definitely makes it a lot more interesting because both teams will be competing for a flight at the same time. And also, I think these cards are awesome because the flights will be like a 450 mile flight anywhere west. And it's like, okay, well, how do you utilize this to your advantage? I think the specific flights are, are by far the most interesting. The guest this time is Michelle Carre from Challenge Accepted. And she's a great guest. She's very energetic. Aiden, who was in the other two videos, I was just talking about the show and little notification popped up on Nebula saying, hey, new episode release. And I was like, cool, I clicked it. And the thumbnail was the pumpkin one where they have to carry a pumpkin through TSA and he still finds that one hilarious. It really does feel like a journey. They go from the northernmost point in the US to the southernmost point. The difference is just wild in how different those places are. They go to a lot of weird places. I think Sam and Michelle's path is a lot closer to what I thought they would have done, whereas Ben and Adam's path is a lot more unconventional. They go to Milwaukee, which is crazy. They go to Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, no, I just like this season. I think the flop is really interesting. I think if they're going to do another season again, I really do want it to be that one, but they play it in a different country. The long awaited number one. This is the this is the best season, in my opinion. It's Jet Like the Game Season 5, New Zealand. Yay! I guess I really just like seasons where they go from the top to the bottom because they go from the top of New Zealand to the bottom of New Zealand in this season. This is by far the most unique game they've created. It's not a race, it's not tag, it's not capture the flag. This is their own game. This is jet lag the game. This is a board game, which I guess is the theme, but honestly, it doesn't even matter. You know how I was saying like Japan was needlessly complicated and hard to keep track of? And New Zealand's like that, except I'm so invested in it, I kind of don't really even care. This season takes place almost exclusively in cars. I don't think they use any other form of transit aside from a ferry uh, to get from the North Island to the South Island, which at first doesn't sound that great, but you realize it's not necessarily about how they get there, but rather how they get there. So along the road, there are various challenges. In order to get past the road, they need to complete them. Completing the challenge will get them coins. Using those coins will be able to get them some power-ups and stuff. I'll talk about those later. Uh, the guest this time is Toby from Tibby's and she is genuinely wonderful. I think my mom put it in the best way, which is she brings out the best in Sam. Uh, she definitely brings out a much more positive energy in Sam than say Brian did, who just tries to piss him off. And listen, I find Brian really funny, but it's just really sweet watching those two have a great bond together. This one feels like a journey. I know I said that about the last one, but this one really does feel like you've been taken somewhere, right? Like you you were on the road trip with them. Don't miss out on a single bit of New Zealand. You really do go from the top to the bottom. And I think the best part of this entire season is it's so well designed, it's so intricate, that at no point did I ever think one team was ahead or behind. Constantly, it felt like it was neck and neck. Maybe a few moments for like five minutes, I'll be like, oh, they're definitely gonna win. Nope, they're not gonna win because Ben and Adam just did a crazy pull of a card. They also subtly and slowly introduce these mechanics to you and it allows the game to progress pretty naturally. Like they don't get into curses until like day three and hell, they don't even end the first day until like episode three. They do so much in this season that no offense to any Kiwis out there, I didn't care about New Zealand before, but now it's my number one travel destination. They show off so much of this country. I mean, I'm, I was sure it was beautiful before, but like now, again, number one travel destination because I want to do what, everything that they did. I'm not going to New Zealand unless I go from the very top to the very bottom and do every single thing that they do in that show. And they use so many different mechanics so wonderfully. I think the nerf dart wasn't even like intended to be a mechanic until like last minute. 
and then it became probably the most interesting thing in the game because they're both in Auckland or whatever and they both fire nerf darts at each other doing the volcano challenge at the exact same time. I mentioned probably four or five times already, I love those little run-ins. I love those coincidence moments where both teams get on the same flight or whatever. They both end up at the same place and they're constantly thinking about like how to one-up each other. This entire season is just those moments. I don't think I won a single episode this season aside from maybe the first where I didn't go, oh my God. It's kind of the beauty of this show, really. I mean, at first I didn't even think I could travel this easily, but they really show that anyone can travel and anyone can have fun making a game. I mean, for the longest time, I didn't think I could make a game like this. I can't make a game like this. Okay, you're looking at 25 pages of a game I made two years ago. Whatever, who cares? It's called Down to a T, and it takes place on the Boston train lines. It's a very similar game to, to uh, I'm gonna say, Race to Visit the Most States, because that was my favorite season at the time uh, until New Zealand came out, and of course we all love New Zealand. Let's take a little look at the rule book here, okay? I mean, I know, I mentioned there's a fan base, Miles in Transit's making his own uh, games, and he's also from Boston, so I might as well make my own little games, right? Down to a T is a game designed by me, Dylan Bates, in a scavenger hunt that takes place across Boston. The official map of the game uses the MBTA as a system for travel and gameplay. We only use the red, orange, green, and blue lines because I thought commuter rail would be too expensive, because this was all coming out of pocket. If you claimed one station, sorry, there was a, different words, so captured and claimed were actually different words. So captured means you went to the station, you completed a challenge there, and if you went to another station on the line, you'd get every station in between, and you get a point for each one. There are intersections uh -oh. as well. If another team got them, they'd like, it would oh, like intersect. Oh, there's a little packing list. Listen, you backpack, game $150 like in cash for remember. challenges. This was coming out of my uh, own wallet, by the way. It went swimmingly, by the way. We played so it, we basically there's a little strategy you could do. One team has. And for a like a quick second, here, you drew the challenge card. By the way, you, you didn't just have to do the challenge at the station. Just do just that. We're, uh, we're, well, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even know, know what, what this, this is supposed doing to mean. Design. This just looks like a nightmare. Anyway, you know what, we're just, gonna, we don't even, you know what, I'm bad rule. A uh, little doing upset here. Uh, I didn't have filming Anyone cameras like they do on Jetlag the game. So it's like, fine, I'll use my own phone and then I'll give whoever an extra like phone or whatever. For the, for the where if you got off the train off. and so then you got back on the train, you could do, you do the challenge wherever. If you draw a card at the station, you can complete the challenge wherever. Which, um, for like a I, quick I second, you know drew the challenge card track of this. and then you got like, back on the have, train, like, a you or something. Do I didn't even have whiteboards on By the way, the MBTA is like the worst subway system in like the world, by the way. This is... Oh, I forgot to mention, um, for balancing reasons, there are different you couldn't have someone levels. just go there are mild stations, stations, there's medium, and there's spicy. And if you decided you didn't want to do a mild or medium the bottom you just, of the train line, uh, veto and it, and then upgrade to the next level of challenges. Uh, uh, we have the little challenge like that we pull, just like in Jet Lag the game. Mild challenges. Take a selfie with 10 people. Take a selfie with 10 people in it. Two of the 10 people can be you, but all the people in the photo must be consented to be in the photo and the video. Challenge is automatically next train blind. Bonus challenge, two points. Complete this challenge, but your team members have 10 steps total, not each. The person cannot take off their blindfold until both members board. Using leads create a political map of Massachusetts. The map must be at least a foot long and must mark out Boston using a different leaf. Catch a Pokemon plant. Either catch a Pokemon, Pokemon Go, or acquire a Pokemon card. Make sure to save to eat. I forgot even mention. I didn't even end up making all Leaf maps are a thing. It turns out coming out with 52 leaf. unique plant challenges found in the wild and not within a store garden. Both team members must put in some amount of it. Like fly a paper right? airplane. Awesome. Oh, I forgot, there's also bonus there there instead. This can continue until you reach the station before the other team can claim another one. Bonus challenge is to take a fo photo of the other team members and send it to them. Wow. I mean, anyone can make a game like that, right? Uh, I mean, there were a there were a few complications I had. Uh, number one, it was a little hard finding people uh, to play a 14 hour long game with me and I was designing this game for six months straight. And also uh, the week I plan on doing it was June the 17th of 2023. And uh, what was going on that week was I was in a musical and it was tech week and also it was the finals week and I also needed to edit a big video project, but that's neither here nor there um, because I was going to play this game. And I, I mean, I did, like, look at, look at this. I, we, what do we, look at this. I, I played it, I played it, guys. Um, and then there, there, there are a few other minor uh, uh, upsets. 
Uh, a few people backed out, so I found more people willing to do it, and then eventually I, I nearly ran out of people, but that's fine, because I got three people to, to join me, and uh, when I got the three people to join me, uh, one of them I kind of had a, a small falling out with, and uh, we, we kind of we kind of didn't play the game, but it doesn't it doesn't even matter. Um, but because that's we still got the cards, we still have the challenge cards, right? Uh, because we're gonna make the cards. I had a friend of mine, uh, an artist friend of mine, make all these cards. But uh, uh oh, they they broke their wrist when they were making the cards. So now we just don't have any more cards. Um, all the cards I had to make myself. These are all these are all designed by me. Can you tell? These were designed by me. These these are all designed by me. Um, oh my god. And, you know, a few other minor upsets uh, happened that week, like uh, it was kind of also raining that day, and again, I didn't have any way to actually film the thing, so I didn't. I never made this. I, I didn't have a chance to make this. I mean, look at this. Half these cards are just blank. I, I gave up at maybe midnight, the night before I was supposed to play the game. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to be harsh on these, these travel games, but I, uh, I did not end up making this game real. I tried. Believe me, I tried. Wait, no. It's a grind. I'm going to have to clean all this up. All right, that's a wrap.